Hi, and welcome to Z Statistics. Today, we're going to deal with the concept of ANOVA, or Analysis of Variance. Uh, it's a very important concept in statistics, and it pops up all over the place. Uh, in particular, you might recognize it from your studies of regression, if you've previously dealt with that topic. Uh, but here, we're actually dealing with it in a more pure form. We're dealing with it as it applies to a single variable, and, and this is what we call one-way ANOVA. If you're keen on seeing how ANOVA applies to regression, I'll put up a link right here that you can follow to my series of regression videos, and this will be the one that will deal with ANOVA as it applies to regression. But let's get on with ANOVA in a one-way context. So first step is to consider what variance actually is. Now, hopefully you've seen this formula before, uh, but if we look at it, it's just the deviation from the mean of each observation. So each observation x, we calculate its deviation from the mean, minus x bar, and then we square it and add them all together. That's what that sum symbol means. Um, and so we're essentially finding some measure of the spread of the data. Now don't worry too much about the n minus 1 for the moment because realistically we're only at this stage interested in that numerator, the sum of squares which we're going to call SST, or total sum of squares, sum of squares total. So in a sense, you can call it the analysis of sum of squares, as opposed to the analysis of variance. So as an exercise, I'm going to get you to try and find the total sum of squares for the following two samples. Uh, here's A and B. And what I want you to do is try to use this formula here and find that figure, the SST, for both of these two samples. It's really quite crucial to get your head around what SST represents. So I'd recommend pausing the video and seeing if you can come up with the answers. So with that done, the first step is to find the means of these two samples, which is simple enough. The mean of A is 3 and the mean of B is 9. Now, the SST for A, using this formula, I'll just go through it very, very quickly. We take each of these observations in turn. So we go 2, and then we subtract 3, we subtract the mean, and then square it. 2 minus 3 is minus 1, and we square it. 2 again minus 3 is minus 1, and we square it, etc. And then we get a sum of squared total, or total sum of squares, of 6. And if you tried it with B, you should have got 42. And you can see that the larger the SST, the greater the spread of the data. And that's evident when you look at A and B respectively. B clearly has a higher spread or variance, and that comes out in the SST. Let's not forget, this is the numerator of the variance equation anyway. So let's have a look at what one-way ANOVA actually is. We're going to use this example now, um, which is a theoretical stats test where there were nine students. And you can see the top score was nine, perhaps out of ten and the bottom score was 1, and there was lots of scores in between. Um, the first step is always to calculate this total sum of squares. That is the variance, that's the variation, I should say, that we're actually dealing with, which we're going to try to explain. And the total sum of squares in this case is 42, which you can try yourself, but perhaps you'll just believe me. Now let's presume that there were three different streams or classes. And you can see that in one stream we had the person that scored 1, the person that scored 5, and someone that scored 9 in that stream. Stream 2 we had a 4, 5, 6, and stream 3 was 3, 5, 7. Now the question is, and this is what One Way ANOVA asks, is, is there a difference between the streams? Can we say that stream 1 did better or worse than stream 2, or stream 3, etc.? So, how do we do it? Here's a little plot to show you the three streams. And I basically just put the means, they're the dots in the middle, and then the maximum and minimum at the top and bottom. You can see here that the mean of each stream is actually very similar. In fact, it's exactly the same. The mean of stream 1 is 5, the mean of stream 2 is 5, and 3 is also 5. So if you were asked the question, is there a difference between the three streams, you could probably say no straight away. In fact, you could definitely say no straight away. So let's just see how one-way ANOVA goes about answering that question. 
What it does is it splits that total sum of squares into two components, which is the sum of squares within groups and the sum of squares between groups. Now they've got slightly different formulae, but I'm not gonna really deal with the formulae because I, f I feel like they're just really simple once you actually go through an example. So there they are there. You can have a look if you're one of those people that like using formulae. I'm not. I like just running through an example and it sort of solidifies for me. So let's do that. The sum of squares within groups basically focuses on the individual streams themselves. So stream one, we have one, five, and nine. The sum of squares within that group implies that we need to find the mean of that group, which is five. Well, we subtract five from each of the observations. So one minus five is minus four squared. 5 minus 5 is 0, and we square it. 9 minus 5 is 4, and we square it. So the component of the sum of squares within groups for this particular stream is 32. And we can do that again with stream 2. The mean of that stream is 5. We go 3 minus 5, and we get minus 2, and we square it, etc. So the, total, the sum of squares within groups looks at the mean of the group or the mean of the stream, and does that calculation, that sum of squares calculation, with that mean. To find the sum of squares between groups, we're comparing the group's mean with the global mean. So here's the group mean, 5. As it turns out, the global mean is also 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 5 minus the global mean, 5, square it, but then we actually multiply it by the number of observations in the stream. That seems a bit strange, but just imagine that we're doing this calculation for each observation. So let's take the first observation. What's the mean of the group? Five. What's the global mean? Five. Five minus five squared is zero. And we do that with each observation. So that's why we're timesing by three in this case. In this example though, there is no between group variation. Each of these group means is equal to the global mean. So we get 0, 0, 0. And in total then, we have a sum of squares within group of 42 and a sum of squares between groups of 0. So all of the variation between these nine students is occurring within streams. So in this next example, I'm going to change the numbers around a bit. Stream 1 now has 1, 3, 5. Stream 2 has 5, 7, 9, and stream 3 are left alone. And if we look at the plots again, you can see that there is a difference between the means. Now, will one way ANOVA tell us that that difference is significant? Again, it's possibly a good point for you to pause the video and see if you can do those calculations yourself. We've got the means of each group here, x1, x2, and x3, the means. Now, finding the sum of squares within groups, I'm not going to go through it step by step, but hopefully you can see here that the sum of squares within groups is 18 and the sum of squares between groups is 24. So there's actually quite a decent amount of variation between the groups. So in this instance, we might be able to say that there's a statistically significant difference between the groups. And we'll see how to do that in just a second. But something that becomes really evident here is that the total sum of squares is actually equal to the sum of squares within groups and the sum of squares between groups, which is actually quite an interesting property, and it's not necessarily immediately obvious why that would be the case. I'm not going to prove it here, but through the examples you might do of one way ANOVA, you'll find that it always works out. Now, as I said, we're going to need a statistical test which is going to assess whether the sum of squares between groups is big enough to say that there's a statistical difference between the group's means. And that's the f-test built up around this f-statistic, which is the mean square between groups divided by the mean square within groups, which is just those SSB and SSW figures divided by their respective degrees of freedom. I'm not going to quite go into that at the moment, but the numerator degree of freedom is just the number of categories minus 1, c minus 1. And the denominator is n, 
which was nine, that's the number of observations, minus the number of groups, nine minus three is gonna be six. So here we have a comparison of those F statistics created for that first and second example. The first one we had SSW42 and SSB0. In that more recent example, we had 18 and 24. So if we use that calculation for F, we get an F statistic of zero for the first example and an F statistic of four for the second example. As the means get further apart from each other, our F statistic is going to increase. So if they're even further apart than the previous example, we're going to get a, an even higher F statistic. So the actual hypothesis that these statistics are testing is whether all three means are the same. And the higher the F statistic is, the more likely we are to reject that null hypothesis. So here are the p-values associated with each of the F statistics. Of course, the lower the p-value, the more likely we are to reject. So using those p-values, we'd say, certainly in this example on the right, we'd reject H0. That p-value is very, very small indeed. In the middle, that p-value is not quite low enough to reject this null hypothesis at the 5% level of significance, but it would at the 10%. And of course, in this first example, there'd be no way we'd be able to reject H0. So that's just about it for one way ANOVA. But before we go, let's just have a look at the Excel spreadsheet I was using to actually construct the examples uh, throughout this tutorial. I'll make it available uh, as a link in the comments section of the video. Um, and so if you download it, you can actually put in your own values for all of the observations and kind of see what happens to the ANOVA values, to the F statistic and the P value when you change all of the actual observations. Um, so all you need to do is just edit the fields where we've got the mark. Don't forget we're talking about the mark of an exam for some statistics, for nine students of statistics, split into three streams. So you edit the fields where it says mark, and you can see what happens to the sum of squares contribution within group, between group, and total. But down here, you actually get a very familiar ANOVA output, which is probably worth getting used to, where you've got the between groups and within groups sum of squares summarized. We've got the actual sum of squares here, the degrees of freedom in the next column. Now, to get the degrees of freedom between groups, it's the number of groups minus one, so three minus one is two. And within groups, it's the number of observations minus the number of groups. So that's six. And then the total is the sum. And you can actually have a look through here and have a look at the formulas I've used for each of these to calculate them. This third column being the mean square, which is the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. Anyway, you can have a play around with that Excel spreadsheet on your own time. But that's it. Hope you've enjoyed One Way ANOVA. My name's Justin Zeltzer.